guys, it's Nassim here. Now I've been using the iPad Air 4 for over a year now and after an extended amount of time of using it, I've pretty much gathered all of my opinions that I have about it as a whole. And I think that in terms of value, the iPad Air 4 is the best iPad that you can get in the year of 2022. And I say this because when you think about it, what does the average iPad user do on their iPad that this iPad can't do? Insanely fast internet speeds that support on the go internet, check. An insanely powerful chip that can handle any game that's designed for the software, check. A new and updated body that is comparable to any powerhouse iPad in the lineup, check. And an amazing software that allows the average user to do things like watch movies, play games, and even edit videos, check. And this is why I say that the iPad Air 4 is the best iPad that you can get because it does all of these same things that the much more expensive iPad Pro does, all for a cheaper price. And yes, I know you can argue that the iPad Pro has a higher refresh rate, it's faster and it's more powerful, but if we're being realistic, the iPad Pro series has way more power than it knows what to do with. The average person does not edit videos on their iPad, Final Cut doesn't even exist on its software, so technically speaking, the average person does not use the iPad to its full capabilities. Most people get iPads to watch content, play video games, do some photo editing, and all other sorts of small things. And the iPad OS 15 doesn't support any heavy apps like a MacBook would, so if I'm being honest, the M1 iPad Pro is a huge waste of money for everyone involved. And that's where the iPad Air 4 comes in. It has a very reasonable $550 price tag, it has more than enough power to support all the things that you need to do, and it has an amazing size so you won't have to compromise for a smaller iPad. And after 1 month, 2 months, 3 months, all the way up to a year, I still say that in terms of value, this is the best money that I have ever spent on an iPad, and I think that if you are in the market of getting an iPad, then this is the best one that you can get. And all right, you guys, I'm done ranting and raving about how great the iPad Air 4 is. Now, let me give you my experience of me having it for over a year now. Now, the first thing that I loved about my iPad Air 4 after a year was the insanely beautiful 10.9 inch liquid retina display. And this display was amazing to me because it made everything that I was doing on my iPad that much more enjoyable. Whenever I was watching movies, it felt like I was watching it on a well-sized portable TV. Whenever I was playing games on it, I could see everything very clear. And after a while, I started gaming casually on my iPad with my controller and stand to help my experience. And whenever I would write ideas for my videos on it, I felt like I was typing on my small laptop, which enhanced the experience thanks to the amazing keyboards. I also love the fact that Apple decided to get rid of the unbalanced bezels that were on the previous iPad Airs, as it gave this iPad a much cooler, easier to use screen that had no extra distractions. And speaking of distractions, I also at times will use my iPad Air to be my personal GPS in my car, and that was super helpful thanks to the really big screen. Now I also love the fact that the software fit the screen really well, because a lot of times, that's not the case with a lot of other companies. The average tablet feels really slow, gets extremely laggy at times, and is basically a phone software that's stretched out. But when it came to the iPad Air 4, I really like that even though the iOS 15 is on the iPhone, it doesn't do anything that the iPhone does and isn't a stretched out mobile version of the software. My favorite feature that I like within the software was the multi-finger gestures that resemble the MacBook lineup. Like right here, you can see that with different gestures, I'm able to move through apps, switch apps, and even pull up a app manager, which was extremely helpful whenever I wanted to go back to a previous task. Also, the fact that they added widgets to the iPad made the iPad OS that much more enjoyable because it allowed me to view helpful information without even having to open anything. And the final thing that I found really helpful when it came to the software was the fact that my iPad was able to use split screen multitask. And this aided me a lot because whenever I wanted to shop online while watching a video, I could do it at ease. And there were just many things that Apple paid attention to that really helped with my productivity overall. And to show you guys how well the screen holds up after a year of use, I decided to give you guys some examples of me watching videos and playing different video games. Now, I've been using the Apple Watch Series 3 for about four years now, and after using it day in and day out, there was one statement that kept coming to my mind that I feel sums up the Apple Watch Series 3 pretty well. And that statement is, I think that the Apple Watch Series 3 is the perfect watch for someone who has never experienced an Apple Watch.
Now, another thing that I loved about my iPad Air 4 after using it for over a year now was the fact that it had one of the best batteries that I had ever seen on an iPad. And when I say one of the best batteries, I mean that I only had to charge this thing three times a week. My average on-screen time for this iPad was about three to five hours. And on a day-to-day -day basis, I would typically plan videos. So that in itself isn't much work for the iPad. I spent about two hours doing it. So that basically takes up my time when writing scripts. And after that, I don't use my iPad until the last few hours before I go to sleep. During that time, I'm on my iPad in bed. I'm usually watching YouTube videos, watching a movie, or checking my YouTube analytics. And then I go to sleep and do it all over again. And I will say that I usually charge my iPad three times a week because I'm not on my iPad all day. And I do very light work on it since that's all the software allows me to do. So I usually end my day with 73% battery charge. And every day I'm doing very light things on it. So I'm not straining the battery too much, but I also want to give the iPad Air 4 credit because even with low use on other devices, most still wouldn't be able to hold up as much as this one does. The only problem that I had with the battery was that it would charge up really slow and I would typically have to charge it up overnight if I ever wanted to see 100% because if I charge it while I got ready for work, it would only give me around like 30% charge. But besides the pretty slow charging speeds, I would say that the iPad Air 4 is a great tablet for someone who has a moderate workflow. But besides the battery, something else that I really thought was great about my iPad one year later was the insanely loud speakers that really enhanced my experience when watching content. And even though they were extremely loud, I also admired the fact that they were also crystal clear because in most cases, whenever a tech company makes loud speakers, you notice an extreme drop in quality and that's a huge red flag for me. If the quality is bad, it just cheapens the experience of watching movies and listening to music, but this wasn't the case with the iPad Air 4. A lot of times I will watch movies with just my iPad and didn't feel the need to use external headphones, which was a huge plus for me. And every once in a while, I will play music with just my iPad speakers and was very happy with the loudness and the quality. And to show you guys what I mean, here's a quick speaker test that'll give you an idea of how great these are. But besides the pretty slow charging speeds, I will say that the iPad Air 4 is a great tablet for someone who has a moderate workflow. Now, the final thing that I loved about my iPad Air 4 was the surprisingly amazing 12 megapixel camera. And even though most people don't use the iPad's camera, I still wanted to let you guys know how great it was. Like right here, you can see just how crystal clear the photos were whenever the lighting presented itself. The camera was really able to show off its true potential and a lot of selfies were color accurate and the best that the tablet had to offer. It was also able to capture nature pretty well and the only problem that I had was the fact that the graininess would pop out a lot once the light isn't at its best but in my honest opinion I don't think that matters that much within an iPad. The night photos were definitely not that great but were good for an iPad. The graininess showed the most in the nighttime, and the skies weren't that accurate to real life, which was kind of a bummer. And when it comes to video, I wanted to give you guys some examples of different videos I took in case you were looking to use it. And these are the reasons why I think that the iPad Air 4 is the best iPad when it comes to value. Because anything that you need an iPad to do, it does very well at a cheaper price. And the iPad Pro is a waste of money because yes, you have all that power, but what are you doing with all that power? Watching videos, editing a picture, playing games? For that amount of money, you're better off buying a PC. But for the people who specifically want an iPad, I would really advise you guys to save your money and get the iPad Air 4. And also let me know down in the comments, which iPad do you think is better in terms of value? The iPad Pro or the iPad Air 4? Let me know down below. And if you guys made it to the end of this video, I would like to say thank you for sticking around and don't forget to like the video and subscribe. It will be very appreciated. And as far as social media, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace. Yeah.